On today's show, we break down the rest of the matchups. A lot of important news happening, a lot of it breaking during the show, some live reactions, and of course, the wheel of shame. Don't miss a moment. Subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment, like the video, and enjoy. For a clan, while you sort out your 2022 budget, think about this. You can save 72% on restaurant quality meals with HelloFresh. And you don't even need to hit the grocery store. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code FOOTBALLER16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLER16. This is Alan Lazard, a.k.a. the Lazard King, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's title time, fellas. Oh, yeah. Get that high tea. Someone just pointed out to me something very interesting. It was probably me. I said interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Friday, December 31st, by the way. Welcome Is that in. what's interesting? Welcome into the fantasy <laughs> football. No, we. I, it's been brought up. Like, Sony Michelle and Rashad Penny are, like, super hyper-relevant this week, right? Championship right. week. Right. But then Ronald Jones is that same draft class. Yes. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah, I mean, that that draft class, uh, they just – they were like a wine. They were not ready <laughs> yet to be drank. They needed some time <laughs> to – They were they were just grapes. Exactly, exactly. And now these grapes are turning into – A fine – A fine wine like to a, drink on championship weekend. Man. And you, you may only get a drink at once. I mean – the likelihood of those three being relevant on the same weekend ever again. Yeah, it's fun. Not to mention, I mean, is that the same draft class as Treadwell and Perryman? Oh, well, <laughs> Andy had a cough or a sneeze or something over there. Um, that sounds like, uh, did you inhale some spit? No comment. <laughs> Maybe it was too, too hard for me to uh, comprehend all of these relevant superstars. Got choked up thinking about Ronald Jones? I, the problem was trying to push through. <laughs> <laughs> that was the I, I I thought I could get the word Perryman out and he just Perryman. <laughs> I don't remember. Was that the Perryman draft? I can tell you. Well, now you because no. you got news now that Antonio Brown is he's uh got got the old downgrade. Yeah. Oh boy. Just when you're feeling maybe more confident in Tom Brady, you get a little oh boy, get a little surprise. There's was, a lot. It was not the Perryman year. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Treadwell's relevant, and Perryman's relevant this week. So, you we got news what Mike Evans might be back out there? Yeah, we do have a news section, though. I feel That's like we're, okay. we're getting just, ahead I'm of just, ourselves. Mike, just, it's Friday. Okay. All right, loosen oh, up a little all bit. All right. I you said it's title time. Yeah, I didn't know it was casual Friday. That's why I <laughs> coughed on air. <laughs> oh, what is happening? <laughs> You you said loosen up, and they that's too loose. That's on you, man. That's too loose. Most of the time, giving them button control over there is, <laughs> is okay. Oh, no. You know who else? Another running back drafted in that same draft class? Chase Edmonds. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. no, that's oh. not good, Mike. We're playing against Chase Edmonds Oh, do this you week. feel like there is a... There is a power growing in yeah. the... What is it, 2018 The class? 2018 running back room is... This is their... Week to shine in All 2021. Right. If this was the news section, I'd bring up Connor getting downgraded to not practicing. But I won't. Wait for it. I'm not going to do that because it's, um, well, it's Friday and Friday's for something else. Put Clan Friday. If I do ever cough to death, I want it to be on air. I just want that. Oh, slow. yeah. Well, yeah. You got to do it for the gram. <laughs> Every... This whole week, if I glance to the right, man, the yellow, the yellow Jason hits me fresh. Yeah, because it's mean, not just on camera; it's it's the light. This yeah, is, this is real life. This is just who I am now in this seat. Well, we're gonna give away uh, a jersey right now for Ronald Jones, a Ronald <laughs> Jones signed jersey in celebration of this draft class. Uh, Very timely. The winner on Patreon is El Capo de Soldati. Mm. Congratulations! Yep. You know, it's to the point where I think the producers are picking people with. The most difficult names. Oh, no. You know what you just did? You I just made everyone them? go change their name to something 
awful and impossible yeah. to read. Congratulations, you win a Ronald Jones signed jersey from pristineauction.com. If you would like to bid on something over there, go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. It's our daily COVID boogie. Mm -hmm. Mike Williams, Tyler Huntley, LaVisca Chenault, Brian Edwards, Marlon Mack off the COVID list. Congratulations, guys. And uh, Tevin Coleman, Darius Slayton, Khalif Raymond. On to. On to the COVID list. Um, A.J. Brown didn't practice. It was just precautionary. He's on track to play. Antonio <sighs> Brown didn't practice. That is uh, probably not precautionary. Yeah, probably not. And that's – he did uh, – so remember the tale of Antonio Brown. He's returning uh, – he just returned this past weekend from a, a lengthy absence, a major injury, played a whole bunch of snaps, had a limited practice on Wednesday, and then was downgraded. Yeah, it's really not good. It's not a good sign. Um, obviously, that was my start of the week um, yesterday. I I would nice job. Thank you, thank you. I I should have seen him getting downgraded in practice. Twitter thinks you should have. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, pay pay attention. If if all of a sudden he's back to a full practice, then I'm fine with him as a start of the week. I think he's great. But if if it takes him a little bit to get back, and you have a good pivot option, I would I would look to pivot. And he, when people get downgraded. It's, pretty common they just missed that week jeff wilson and daryl williams both from that draft class no yeah this is the 2018 yeah. time to shine 2018 running backs does that mean saquon can have a good week Ooh. because he is the leader of that draft class does he play for the giants yeah that's mm. you know, sorry maybe that is interesting yeah. <laughs> mike's like man i'll buy in the science <laughs> um and and part of the, the antonio brown news for, for bucks Mike Evans cleared the COVID list and was apparently at a limited practice as well. Saw some video of that. Looked all right. He is trying to hit that 1,000-yard mark. Needs 101 more yards, I believe. 101? Something like, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I thought it was 160. I don't know. I thought it was 110. Look, the, the, the thing about it is there's no way to find out. Yeah, thank you, Mike. <laughs> that's, good, that's a good point. But, uh, He's at 899 on the year, so I'm, of course, oh, I'm nice. obviously really correct okay. here. Two games to do it. We th we've like we view but it wouldn't as he think it's like one like in his head he's like I got to do this in sixteen for championship week no not for, <laughs> not for championship <laughs> week just because the season's longer no I don't think so nobody nobody cares that old records used to be fourteen games when it moved to sixteen all he cares about is getting a thousand in the season and so if he gets fifty and fifty one in the next two games he gets there. Lamar Jackson didn't practice he's not going to play no uh, Hollywood Brown didn't practice due to an illness. Yeah, he was probably on that field. What is going on there? The level of illness reports from the the Ravens is is preposterous. Uh, if you are in the Baltimore what, area, the cafeteria staff, what is going on I here? I would recommend you move because the <laughs> there is a plague upon that. If that you area. walk into that cafeteria and you like tap on the shoulder of the head cook, does Mike Tomlin turn around? <laughs> <laughs> like, get some zinc, fellas. I don't know. Have I, a smoothie. What I know you happening? don't control it, but it just seems crazy. Yeah. Um, Antonio Gibson sidelined on Thursday's practice. I don't think that's trending the right direction. With a hip. This was not the toe. This is a different injury that is concerning. He, he already missed. Like, you can't play him. You can't, right? Uh, I mean, he, maybe. He, he missed half the game last game. Well, he was benched uh, because of the blowout. Not like not right. benched because he was terrible, but because there's or because of the hip. Well, I mean, we don't know. But I'm saying that's he's banged up, and the team is the, this game is done. Why play Antonio Gibson anymore? Yeah, I I uh, I think that there are plenty of teams that will really have to play Antonio Gibson, and he's a he's a tough Daria Gumbawale with yeah, full I would play, or uh, Antonio Gibson. I would play Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I would too. Oh man, I hope he's my assuming that fl flex or something in that situation. Assuming that that we see some more practice from him. All right, uh, don't forget, jointhefoot.com for the Injury Blitz podcast for more injury updates from Matthew Betts, the game day alerts, and the community of listeners to this show. That was today's news notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. 
You can grab the channel there and get alerts as well. I just realized something. This is the first time that, like, you know, since it happened. Ooh, I don't know what it is, but I think that, I do. That Al and I have been in the same room together. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm. And, Boom shakalaka. <laughs> and if I told Al that I bought a canvas print of the interception, would he believe me? <laughs> oh, yes, I would believe you. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be proud of you, to be honest. It's on the way. Good for you. Yeah, yeah it's on the way. Um, you doing well? I'm doing better. Okay. Now, th I know you're not doing well because this morning you decided to submit all the projections for this week into our Slack channel about how your team's projected for more points than all the remaining teams in our league. Yeah. So you are still you're still in the rash. Is that the denial stage, the rationality stage? Uh, it Ang makes me feel better. I'll go with anger. Yeah, it, there's some anger here. mixed in, but I also I'm still proud of my squad. Well, here here's a philosophical. They question. lost. <laughs> <laughs> here here here's a question though for all of us: If you lose, like if you lost in the semifinals, which I know a lot of you out there did, is it better that the person that beat you wins the championship or not? Hundred percent. Yes, it is. It just because you went down to the champ. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I hate them and I want them to lose. But at the end, when they win, I know that I lost to the champ. The best team beat me, and then you can feel like you're second place. And follow, then, follow up. Yeah, I know where you're going. If you have uh, more points than both of the teams in the title game, is that better or worse? That's this worse. Is why you don't check no it's better you no, don't it's, it's way worse check it's worse I'm, I'm you say for andy to win and me to have the most points this week if that's the case then 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 ian book's interception single-handedly cost you a championship yeah okay and that's better for you just confirmation that my squad was the best in the league you're still playing but it wasn't because you lost you're still playing for bronze oh yeah what's, you, what's bronze <laughs> exactly there's gold and there's nothing all right uh let's jump into the forecast fantasy forecast it's real nice throwing in that there's gold and there's nothing for me if i drop if i drop this week don't screw up my silver's not gonna look any better than your bronze is it all right, we covered a bunch of games yesterday. The Falcons, Bills, Giants, Bears, Chiefs, Bengals, Dolphins, Titans, Raiders, Colts, Jags, Patriots, Buccaneers, Jets, Eagles, Washington. You made it. Eight games left. So if you wanted to hear the breakdowns of those games, click on yesterday's show. Let's start with the Rams, 11-4, and four, taking on the 8-7 and seven Baltimore Ravens. You know, the Ravens got their butts kicked last week. Thoroughly. They were at a disadvantage on offense, you know, third string quarterback. But it was the defense that uh that gave it up. They're giving up thirty seven points a game to wide receivers right now. Uh that's thirty first over the last six weeks. They're one of the worst on the year. So, I mean, on the surface, this game looks like a not just Matthew Stafford, but all the receiving options look like really strong plays. Yeah, I mean the the Baltimore Ravens defense is one to target right now through the air. Uh, they absolutely just – it's not that they – obviously, they're a well-coached team. They're going to do everything they can to uh, scheme their way out of it. But when you lose a certain amount of personnel, there's just nothing you can do, and that's what's happened. Now, there's a little bit rain. A um, little bit rain. Projected. Are you the weatherman today? I'm going to have to be Do you want to be, be the weatherman yes. today? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll try to be the weatherman. Here's my overarching weather report. Right now, a lot of the East Coast games look like there's going to be a little bit rain. However, th come Sunday morning, we will know far more than we know now. And th there's a chance that this could be a really wet weekend that is affected heavily by weather. And there is a chance that uh, some of this is over and done with by the time the games roll around. Breaking news. I was trying to let us finish the, the matchup, but... I wasn't going to do that. Okay. This is too big. I, I do not know. It's not great. Oh, no. Uh, Kirk Cousins has been placed on the reserve COVID list. So he will not be playing. There's the, no chance. He's unvaccinated. Well, and he's within the... Yeah, the like, window is Because he's short. unvaccinated, it's a, I think it's the minimum five-day window, if I'm remembering that correctly. This that means just he's broke just now yeah. on Twitter. Tom Pelissero... Uh, he is out for the game against the Packers. Wow. 
So <laughs> really, this is not so much like, hey, everybody's depending on Kirk Cousins against Green Bay, although you might have been. Right. This is rut row uh, Justin news. Jefferson. Uh, yes. I, would, I would say it's bad news Aaron Rodgers. Um, could, that's that's a fair point. Dude. This is a game that is projected to be about five degrees at kickoff right now. You're going to have a backup quarterback in for the Minnesota Vikings. And it's probably going to be Kellen Mond. Yeah, and, and so getting his first start, right? Yeah, I mean it, it's. Uh, I'm just searching for a Bond joke, but guys, I'm oh. not. I've stopped paying attention. <laughs> well, I mean, it's right. It's, the name's Mond. <laughs> Kellen, Kellen Mond. Mond. It's the voice that you get. I had that. But I didn't think about the voice. Oh, yeah. Well done. Um, What's his name again? Mond. <laughs> Keller Mond. Um, well, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, so Justin Jefferson, it's not like you're benching him. You just, everybody in this game just got like a wet blanket thrown over. Not them. everybody. A.J. Dillon. Um, Dalvin? No, Dalvin got, Dalvin got a wet blanket on yeah. him a little bit. I mean, he, son of a. He'll, he'll see a bunch of volume, but it. It hurts the offense when you have a. Uh, You're never around the goal line. A third round. They drafted Kelamond Mond. In the <laughs> Thank you. That's forever. <laughs> you cannot. Mond. They oh, drafted him in man. the third round. He's a rookie. And, oh, I, I, I'm presuming he's the starter at this point. But, oh, gross. <sighs> Sorry, everybody. Yeah, that's just not good. So, all right, the fallout's going to be there. Um, so back to the Rams. That's a one of our matchups for today, right? Yes, sir. Sunday oh, night okay. game. Great. Yep. Then we'll talk about it some more. We'll talk about who? Mond. All right. Uh, back to the Rams. Man, I wish it was James Mond. That's, <laughs> I, I mean, it's just guys, it ruins it listen. because you go Mond. James Mond, and then it's great. I, I'm not joking. There's Kellen Mond's Wikipedia page up on my screen because I was checking the middle name. Oh. I was praying for a James middle name there. Man, parents did it wrong. <clears throat> He's you got, you got to choose that, man. There has to be a James he in that family. could have been James. They failed him. <laughs> uh, all right, we're never getting back to this matchup. <laughs> it's going to be Tyler Huntley, and he's in play. Like Tyler Huntley is very much in play, although coming off the COVID list, you might make the argument – you know, there's a little bit more of a variable there with the running. There and, is. And, but at the end of the day, when you're on the field and you're the quarterback and the ball's in your hands, it's not like Tyreek Hill where the ball's not in your hands and you don't have, you know, if Tyreek had caught something, I'm sure the adrenaline takes over for a play. For, I think there's an element there with the quarterback there. Uh, 21 point implied point total. They're at home. They're going to need to catch up in this game, and I, th I still think the narrative opens the door for Huntley to have a nice, nice week. I, I think it's possible. Uh, the matchup <clears throat> is tough. The Rams on the season are uh, the sixth worst matchup for for fantasy quarterbacks. Uh, he's yes, he's in play, but like this, I would easily play Trey Lance over Tyler Huntley at this point. Maybe you're in you know a two QB league, and and Huntley is on your bench. Okay, then then maybe, but I do have my concerns with him coming off of the the COVID list here, where maybe he'll make the he'll make certain decisions of I see open field and I want to run, but he's like I'm just I'm too tired I yeah, can't actually do it. When he was the quarterback one uh, a couple weeks ago, he had over seventy rushing yards. So if the gas tank isn't quite there, it might be difficult for him to do that. But I do think he is a uh, a, a fine. Uh, pivot. Let's yeah, say you Kirk lost Cousins. Kirk Cousins, yeah. you know, and you're going, "Oh my gosh, what do I do?" That was my quarterback. Then could be without Hollywood Brown too. Yeah, but it, it's all Mark Andrews. <laughs> Mark, okay. Mark, yeah, Mark Andrews fair. is unstoppable right now. So you're not messing with running backs on the Baltimore side. With, not anymore. Yeah, and in the you know the Rams are a pretty good defense. Cam Akers not likely to play. It's going to be Sean, Sony Michelle by himself. I mean. <sighs> This is uh, like he has running back one potential on the week. He does. He's, he certainly does. Um, you know, the the Rams are favored, and if they get up, they're going to run Sony Michelle, and, and they could get up by running Sony Michelle. The problem is the place to attack Baltimore really, really is through the air. They're not going to put up a fight through the air as much as they will on the ground. They're, they're the, you know, over the last six weeks, they're top eight against running backs while being terrible through the air. So I 
do see this more as a Stafford Cup, Beckham, Van Jefferson, even Higby game. Um, I want to bring up safe. I want to bring up Van Jefferson though because he's on the field every play. Mm -hmm. But combined the last two weeks, he's three for twenty nine. So I don't think I turn to Van Jefferson just because of the matchup here after two bad weeks, knowing that this the the floor is this low, and the the games that he's had his bigger games in, it's been a big play. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know I, I'm not going to turn to him over almost anybody. Yeah, he, he's really only had one game where he was pretty good without a big play. Um, but but I'll say so if you're doing that math of he's three for twenty nine. And you're not excited to play him. Odell Beckham is five for forty-four in the past two weeks as well. Like the matchup to me, Van Jefferson is not a locked and loaded. I would much prefer Odell Beckham, but I think that Van Jefferson is the type of variance upside play. Even after incredibly disappointing last week, I think he's still in play as a flex for me. Would you be playing Van Jefferson at all, Jerry? You trying to move away yeah it's, it's a matter of the other options I don't I don't think he is someone that you have Robbie to bench. Anderson with Sam Darnold. yeah I would play Van Jefferson you would yeah because Robbie's been really good uh I think that you you talk about he had and I talked about Van Jefferson has only had one good game without the big play but he's had several big plays and if you're going to tell me what matchup is I mean we, we were talking about this weeks ago before some of the injuries Baltimore is giving up huge deep plays to wide receivers that could very well be Van Jefferson. Brandon Ayuk against Houston with Trey Lance or Van Jefferson. I would go Ayuk. Okay. okay. Where would where would you go? Uh, I'm not playing Van Jefferson. Okay. I don't. I that's like the uh, <clears throat> I'm if I don't get the touchdown, I'm gonna be very sad, and I guess I would probably be aiming for higher than that. The Broncos at seven and eight, taking on the eight and seven Chargers. This game's in Los Angeles. The Chargers are six and a half point favorites. Over under is forty five and a half, and this is a a, a huge reinforcements situation for the Chargers. Not only do you get Eckler back, but you get Jalen Guyton, you get Mike Williams, you get an offensive lineman back. That's huge. Which uh, wait, Corey Lindsley right was out their center. Yeah, is that I, right? I think they had maybe two players missing. So this is they, they were missing every piece of that offense that was valuable last week. And so you look at, do you have another one? I do. Breaking news. It's almost the weekend. Can we not? Yeah. Well, that's why it's actually important is because it's almost the weekend. A decision has gotten a little bit easier out there. Players being added to the COVID-19 for the Washington football team guard, Eric Flowers and running back Antonio Gibson. Yeah. So if you were wondering about whether or not you could start Antonio Gibson, you I would cannot. not. Well, Dang, is that man. matchup on today? <laughs> Did we already cover that? <laughs> Talking to Jarrett Patterson yesterday. All right, give you a get, quick Jared Patterson take, Jason. It's 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 the in the uh, Agumbo Wale camp for Jarrett Patterson. Would you play Agumbo Wale or Jared Patterson? Patterson. Okay. Yeah, but the the matchup for Agumbo Wale against the Patriots and bad weather. Um, Washington this week is Against playing the Eagles. Eagles, it's, it's a it, terrible matchup, and you you just said that they uh they lost Eric Flowers. Yeah, woof, woof. Yeah, I mean, right now the last four games the Eagles played, the most yards they've given up on the ground is sixty one total yards, and they have given up a touchdown on only one of the last five games on the ground. That so was if, Gibson, right? It was Gibson twice. Um, in the same game. So you're you're looking at it and saying, well, what are your outcomes for Patterson? Your outcomes are probably 16 for 50 and no touchdowns. Yep. And you hope he catches some passes. I mean, that would be that would be nice. Man, uh, that's which is probably where, a little bit better than Agumba Wale. The the difference being, I think Agumba Wale will probably catch more passes. Um, he could, he could. Yeah, but it, I, it's, I will. Yeah, <laughs> this is quite the discussion here of Jared Patterson versus Dare. Uh, I feel more confident that Jarrett Patterson will be the clear leader of the the running back room. I presume that it will be Dare for Jacksonville, but there is certainly a chance that it is not. Where like there's a timeshare that we don't see coming. Uh you're not into Wendell Smallwood then? Um for Washington? Yeah. Yeah. 
<sighs> what if you had Cordero Patterson and you can go Patterson Patterson? Is that a big Oh I think that's a way to lose Patterson. <laughs> it's so Patterson and Patterson will be the uh, silver medal. All right. Uh man, this what a show today. Yeah. I'm, can we stop that? Did, I, did you just get another message? I did. You s- stop it. No, we're okay. We're oh, okay. Gosh. That one is not a COVID breaking news. That man. one is a pickup milk on the I feel way. Like I, need do- <laughs> yes. I feel like I need Doctor Strange to put a pause. On mm-hmm. the COVID news for a minute. Although I guess it's better that we find out now than after yes, the show. Is. We were talking about the Chargers. I, All right. You know, this is this has been brutal for me because at the very, very beginning of the week, my impulse was, well, maybe Justin Herbert's not the best option. Then it was like, okay, I looked into it. He's the one that's had a little bit of success against Denver, and he's going to get all these weapons back, and he's at home, and then I'm really into it. And then I went back, and I looked at the Denver defense against quarterbacks, and it's like, I don't know if they've given up three touchdowns through the year. It's normally one or two. So I don't think you're moving away from Herbert, especially with all the positive news, them being at home. It's just, it's probably fair to temper your expectations and not expect them to carry you this week. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Um, ironically, I think this could be one of those weeks that is similar to where Justin Herbert um, let down your hopes a couple weeks ago against Houston, but he was still a top 10 guy because I, across the board, you know, Aaron Rodgers in the freezing you got Kyler, who's been bad in a bad matchup. You got a lot of these quarterbacks that are kind of in that same tier that I think they're all kind of lowered expectations. So this matchup seems fine with his weapons back. Okay. All right. And then the other side is, you know, you've got Javante and Gordon going up against a team that just got disintegrated by Rex Burkett. So that seems like both of those guys are in play and you kind of ignore the... the I feel like that was a slight upon Rex Burkhead. Yeah, yes. That's mm. correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Um, you just you said it with a real negative. No, based on his play historically. How dare you. So, I know, sexy Rexy, T-Rexy for um, life. But what what is your take on that side of the ball? I I think both running backs are in play. Uh when it comes down to the final roulette spin of that wheel, you hope that your running back was the one who got the touchdown. <laughs> Because they will split half the work, and if no one scores a touchdown, they'll have very similar points. Yeah, I, I agree. I would put Javante ahead of Melvin if for some reason I had both of them, but they're both decent plays this week. All is, right. Is Fant in play for you? No, I mean, the the matchup is great. I get that. Fant should be good. I almost went with uh, Albert O in our DraftKings lineup oh, because right. the matchup is great and it's not always Fant that takes advantage. There's right. two tight ends here. Um, and I looked it, at him too. Yeah. But it's, it's like two targets. Is one going to be a touchdown? Exactly. So it's like the Jimmy Graham philosophy. When it's Jerry Judy, uh, you know, Cortland Sutton, Noah Fant, I just, I'm out. I am I am really glad you brought that up though. Uh, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you don't miss the end of the show, the DraftKings segment where one of us will be spinning the wheel of shame. Mm. It's not me today. Oh, it's not me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's finally me. All right, <laughs> it's been a long time. I don't know why I came back to the office. Uh, for, can, it, can it be Al? This. Can Al take it by like? Uh, he was shamed earlier this week. Oh, that's true. By his fantasy football team. You get to dress up in an Ian Buck jersey. <laughs> Before we move on to the next matchup, uh, I want to thank today's sponsor, FantasyChamps.com. It's time to shine, ladies and gentlemen. You get that title, that hashtag Foot Clan title, and you let people know that you are the best. You are the champion of your fantasy football league. And Fantasy Champs, that's where you do it. Go get the gear, the trophies, the rings, the belts, whatever you need to bling and to shine out. Fantasy Champs has it covered. You need all that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to be fair. You you, you should... want to go into your draft the next year with the belt over your shoulder. Just dripping. Rings on your fingers, a trophy in your hand. Heck yeah, man. And if you want a title shirt, if you want to have the trophy and the ring, you can get that ring for free right now. Fantasychamps.com. Put a trophy or a belt in the cart, add a ring, and that ring that was once $59 is now $0 with the promo code free ring. Again, fantasychamps.com. Put the trophy or belt in the cart, then add the ring and the promo code free ring. Check out free ring trophy dripping sweat at fantasychamps.com. Thank sweat. you. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, Sean Mannion is the backup. 
for Kirk Cousins, but he is not. Um, is he on the COVID list? He's 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 not off the COVID list. Yet. Okay, I say. Uh, on and that ha- was the concern about Cousins is when Mannion got put on there. I was like, oh, Cousins probably hangs out with him. Yeah, and uh, <sighs> so the playoff the playoff hopes for Minnesota dwindling, dwindling. They rushed with me, <laughs> my <laughs> mind. <laughs> All right, the Texans at four and eleven with Mike's favorite player Rex Burkhead yeah, taking baby. on the uh, eight and seven San Francisco 49ers with Mike's favorite player Trey Lance. Uh, oh, what a game it's going to be! General Mills, Trey Lance. This is going to be great when General Mills out outplays Trey Lance in this one. Uh, he may do that, but he will not score more fantasy points. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Houston, San Francisco, 49ers still in a hunt for a playoff spot. Mike has Trey Lance as his start of the week at, at quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo still said yesterday. He thinks he can play. Um, we, I know my two colleagues don't believe that's going to happen. It is important to say, because we, we have been emphatic that it ain't yeah. happening, and I believe that to my core. <clears throat> but um, there was an interview with Jimmy Garoppolo where he said he thinks he can play. He played through it the second half. It's just a matter of, you know, it. so – don't you be prepared, right? Like that's all we're saying is don't just lock in Trey Lance like you don't have a pivot option and you're not even worried about the potential that he doesn't play. I still can't imagine Trey Lance does not play here. Does not play. Okay. Um yeah, I I think it's that's your philosophy right now anyway. If you have a quarterback, eh, you need another quarterback in your yes, mind because you of the COVID list because suddenly Kirk Cousins can happen. In this matchup though, Rex Burkhead 22 for 149 and two. That was very out of bounds for Houston running efficiency. That hadn't really happened all year. And so is he in play against San Francisco? I don't think he's a, he's a volume play in the Agumba Wale, Jarrett Patterson category where I, I think I would take Rex, Rex over those two guys. I would as well. Uh, I just like the Texans. I think the Texans will be able to put, points up and where Washington I don't know Jacksonville I don't think they will uh so I would go with the team that I project an overall uh higher score for the team more opportunities for Rex what about Brandon Cooks who put up 100 yard games in weeks 14 and 15 and yet went to the COVID list coming off the COVID list I think the Tyree Kill news scares everybody yes it does when it comes to like a deep threat wide receiver running these routes. Not just that, also Tyler Lockett. <clears throat> well, Tyler Lockett played last week, though. Right, poorly. Oh, okay. You're also saying, Amari Cooper. I yeah. thought you meant Tyler Lockett coming into oh, this. Oh, no, no, I'm saying Sorry. like these wide, these speedster wide receivers yeah. are... That's a high demand. Yeah, it's they're not performing, and I don't know. You know, we, we don't know the, the actual real health status of Brandon Cooks. If he were fully healthy, this would be a smash play. He probably would have ended up as somebody's start of the week in this game because the 49ers are bleeding points to fantasy wide receivers. He's still he's still in, in consideration for a flex play, but it is, it's risky business. Yeah, I agree. I would be looking to bench him if possible. So... Another wrinkle on the other side at the running back position, Elijah Mitchell has been limited in two practices. He has not had a full practice yet. He hadn't practiced in 26 days. Saw a little bit of video of him. You know, they say he's working the rust off. We don't know if he's going to be active right now. I mean, yesterday you said you thought he wasn't, Jason. I do not. still how I lean. I do not believe he is active. I think it'll be Jeff Wilson uh, as the main guy. Now, they're going to bring back T- Trey Sermon this week. I think what will be scary, we have said from the beginning of the week, if Elijah's ready to go, I would start Elijah. If it's Jeff, without Elijah, I would start Jeff. This is a great smash matchup. The Texans have been the second worst against running backs over the last six weeks, the fourth worst over the course of the season. This is great. The worry is if Elijah is active but doesn't get in a full practice, do you have the confidence to start Elijah? Probably, because I don't think you're going to – with them fighting for a playoff spot and the fact that he's come off of injuries multiple times this year to 20-plus carries, Yeah, I feel like the only way you bring him back is if you're going to give him everything. Yeah, okay, I agree. Now, is there any concern with, okay, Jeff Wilson doesn't play every third down. Uh, Trey Sermon is going to be activated from injured reserve before the game. Kyle Juszczyk plays on third downs. You have Jermichael Hasty. Is it – should you really be confident in Jeff Wilson? Because you may be seeding goal line carries to Trey Lance. That is my only worry is whether or not a goal line carry goes to Trey Lance. And that isn't a big enough worry 
for me to be able to project where I'm not going to play Jeff Wilson. I, I think that um, this is a game where the 49ers... I'm leaning away from him. Really? Yes. They're favored by 12. I think I there are multiple rushing touchdowns in this game, and I think one of them is Jeff. He will not catch passes. No. And he his odds of the goal line, maybe it's Jeff, maybe it's not. But 13 for 50 is... I think a really strong possibility for, for Jeff Wilson. And I guess I just have some concerns about the like myriad of options there. Sure. Uh, maybe you picked up. I mean, he was 14 for 45 last week. His week was saved by a touchdown. Yeah. And that and was without Trey Sermon and Trey Lance. And I don't, I'm not concerned about Trey Sermon, uh, Trey Lance. It, that's a fair argument, but scoring opportunities should be up for the 49ers overall in this game. So okay. I'm still with Jeff, but maybe you, maybe you were able to scoop up, Daryl Williams off of the waiver wire. Would you play Daryl over Jeff? I would. Okay. Yep, I would. Um, Debo, concerned about a change of quarterback? No. No. Brandon Ayuk? More more so. I mean, a secondary option that is really a, a – you know, he's behind George Kittle as well. Um, he's not someone I'm looking to play. He's just like, okay, you can – if the you know, if you're looking between Zay Jones – and Brandon Ayuk, maybe you go the Brandon Ayuk side. I think the story with San Francisco is great matchup, but variables kind of throughout because when you when you change a quarterback mm -hmm. and you have running backs that you don't know who's going to be active, there's some questions. Uh, but they should score a lot of points because the you know, 28 point implied point total. The Cardinals are 10 and five. They're taking on the Dallas Cowboys, who are 11 and four now. Uh, Cowboys coming off a big win. They're six and a half point home favorites. The over under is 52. Arizona's in the playoffs. Dallas is in the playoffs. Kyler only has four passing touchdowns in the last five games played. Gross. Um, Dak had three straight weeks of quarterback 21 before last week's boom half and or three quarters, whatever we want to call it. Saw something yesterday about Zeke getting up to his fastest uh, run yeah, speed saw that. since week six, although it was still well behind week six. He's feeling good, though. And I think what you look for here is is the game competitive? Because if the game is competitive and close, I think you're going to see a lot of Ezekiel Elliott in this game and not as much Tony Pollard. I would agree that it's going to be more Zeke than Pollard, but I think it's going to be more passing than running um, for the Cowboys. The the rush defense for the Cardinals has been pretty good. Outside of one big play, they shut Jonathan Taylor down, and, they're, and they're, uh, their cornerbacks are a little bit depleted right now, and they've been pretty bad. Um, over the last three weeks, they are the worst in giving up fantasy points to wide receivers. Over the last six weeks, they're the third worst on the course of the season. They're still like a bottom eight team. So you this, see that they're missing a corner now. Yes, like Wilson got put on the, I think the COVID list. So Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, I think they are very good starts, and um, I, I, you know, I would be, I would be targeting them. You know, if if Amari Cooper or Obviously, everyone's starting CeeDee Lamb, and Amari Cooper, thankfully, had a big week last week. I think that gives managers kind of that push already to put him in, but I'm not afraid of starting either of those guys, and if there's a question in your lineup, I, I would lean towards the Cowboys' side. Mike, Dalton Schultz has been good for a couple weeks in a row. Yep. I mean, he's he's in play uh, just simply based on um, the, the status of the tight end. Nine targets, eight targets. He's catching almost everything. He's caught uh, what looks like 16 of 17 targets the last two weeks. Two touchdowns. He seems really strong. Yeah. I mean, it, he, the yeah. problem is the Cardinals have really been good against the, the tight end position. They're number one on the course of the season. That's because wide receivers are doing everything. Ex exactly. So that's where y you worry a little bit. I would rather start on the other side of the ball, Zach Ertz over Dalton Schultz. Zach Ertz has been awesome. Yeah, I, um, I agree with that. While he hasn't had massive boom games, I mean, the targets have been there for him. He's sitting here at 11 13 targets, 13 week. targets, 7 targets in the last three weeks. He's far more necessary to the team. Yeah, he's uh, back to a full practice. James Conner is not. He didn't practice Thursday. We had a report in the morning that he was back. It was a pump fake. And he's going to be a game time decision, which he was last week, in which he didn't play. Right. And so you're looking at Chase Edmonds from that 2018 draft class, mm -hmm. and saying maybe he's Probably. the guy again. And he looked so he was the bright spot of the team, in my opinion, last week. Everything between the tackles, everything on the outside, he looked great. 
Yeah, he's, and it's so necessary. He's going to be very involved in the offense. I don't expect James Conner to play based on the the way that the practice has um, gone this week. So if it's Chase Edmonds by himself, I think he's it's not the greatest matchup. But like you said, he's too necessary in all parts of the game. Is there any hesitation to play the Dallas defense the way they've been playing with Arizona on the other side? Not no. to me. Okay, and Kyler. Kyler has been a hotly debated player this week. People want to know. The Trey Lance, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, Tom Brady, Kyler Murray. Um, Trey, <laughs> Trey Lance and Joe Burrow, I am playing Kyler Murray over him. Um, Tom Brady, I am playing over Kyler Murray, but I would play Dak Prescott over all of them on the other side of the ball. All right, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to facing Dak in the championship. I I don't think he's going to be good. Fair for me. It'd be great for him. I'm not looking forward to facing chase edmonds so we'll hold hands carolina five and ten new orleans seven and eight games in new orleans the panthers have a a, a disgusting 15 point implied point total uh the saints are six and a half point favorites on DraftKings sportsbook the over under is 38 Taysom hill's been activated from the oh, covid list 38 Taysom hill has not been that great and if mike's tyler huntley narrative is true then you have the same one with Taysom hill off the COVID list. Sam Darnold's going to start for Carolina. I want to believe that that is a better thing for DJ Moore. Should I? Should uh, I believe that? Yeah, I, I think it's better than than what he's been dealing with uh, with Walker and Cam Newton, certainly. Uh, DJ Moore is just, he's not top 10, but he's a, I think he's a strong wide receiver to play. Uh, he's still in there. And, uh, and I would, disagree a little bit on Taysom Hill he had a terrible game against Tampa Bay it was nine to zero literally everybody in that game had a terrible game but before that he was the QB four back-to-back weeks so he is he's in consideration but the the COVID storyline does scare me yeah yeah I remember one of those games he was not good until the final play of the game, too. I believe oh, the quarterback four. Yeah, yes, on the <laughs> yeah, play like, that he yes. should have gone down on and instead runs like a 50-yard touchdown. Yep. I, I'm just Agreed. saying, like, there's there's some question marks. Obviously, Carolina's defense is all right. Uh, Alvin Kamara, how in the world do you think about him? Uh, I Sad. Uh, I've seen Fond him. memories. <laughs> I mean, that's how I think about Alvin Kamara. It's like, oh, yeah. I loved like, Alvin Kamara. Like the Wolverine meme. I'm looking will at the you picture. Will you bench him? No. No, no matter what? Not just no just about no matter what. I, I do think with Taysom Hill back, they are going to be much better. The Panthers have been giving up Ronald a lot Jones. of them. I was going to say, you got to run the waiver I mean, these wire. are the questions that are actually out there. Yes. The, the Ronald Jones one is out there in in mass. I would play Ronald Jones over Camaro. I I will I will have the courage for us to say it. Oh, man. I, you I know, love Search your heart. You know it to be true. I don't know it to be true. I yes, really you do. don't. Oh man, that is as tough a question. I I think I would s stay with Kamara over Ronald Jones, but he's he's up there. I don't think Kamara has a terrible game. Last Damian Harris or Alvin Kamara? Oh no, Alvin Kamara. Is it a is it a PPR league? I know these. <laughs> yeah, in a PPR can league, it would be. Can the scoring format bail me out? <laughs> sure. <laughs> If it's PPR, I would go with Kamara. If it's half, I, oh, I might play Damian Harris. I, I don't want to. Oh gosh, I don't want to get. I don't boo this week. I don't want to get too, too distracted by last week where they were missing many pieces on their offensive line and their first and second string quarterback. There was nothing Kamara could have done in that game, uh, and it seemed like. Now Kamara is worthless, but I don't believe that to be true. Um, I think Kamara is still one of the best running backs in the league. Agreed. I think the offense is going to be much better with Taysom Hill, and he's a guy that I'm going to start in most situations. Unless I've got smash matchup after smash matchup, personally, I would have him in my lineup. Yeah, we're just talking about Ronald Jones. I love Ronald Jones. Okay. <laughs> I want you good to, deflection. I want you to know I went. I've been in full like. DraftKings lineup panic. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I had it so locked and loaded, and now I'm just I've been wavering here. You're tinkering, don't tinker. Yeah, I've been tinkering. <laughs> I'm not sure I like my lineup. You t Whew. all right? Uh, let's talk about the Detroit Lions. That's fun. Two and twelve and one. 
Just got news this morning that uh, Jared Goff's doubtful to play. DraftKings Sportsbook line, uh, they're taking on the Seahawks, who are 5 and 10. Seahawks are seven point favorites. The over under is 42. It might go up. And um, I think this game's going to be fun for fantasy football. Like on, on paper, you're like, oh, Lions, Seahawks. Blah, blah. Yeah, no, we got two bad defenses. You got a lot of uh, high level fantasy players. Rashad Penny. Back from the dead, he's a great play against the Lions. DeAndre Swift, back from the injury report, in a great situation against uh, the, the the Seattle Seahawks, who are on the season the 31st best matchup for fantasy running backs. Metcalf and Lockett, another week to heal for Russell Wilson. You hear the Russ know. comments all about, you know, hope it's not his last game. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't. And, and he's like volunteering that answer. Like nobody's like really asking it. <laughs> and he's like, I'm... sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I don't know if that means he wants to go out there and kind of reset the market for himself or what? Oh, I'm sure he wants to, but he's probably wanted to do that the last six weeks. Do you buy Dan Campbell coming out and saying he wants to cut him loose when speaking about DeAndre Swift I do buy it um our injury Dang guy it. Matthew Betts <laughs> has been talking for a couple of weeks that he thinks that DeAndre Swift is he's been healthy, healthy. that this injury is not one that should limit him it was a shoulder injury the fact that he shouldn't be limited Dan Campbell's saying we're just going to use him we'll shut him down after week 18 I think they're going to try to score as many points and have the most fun and play the best football that they can they're playing inspired football for Dan Campbell and I think Swift is a is a great play here against a team that has um, not been good against the run. I I hate to say that to you, Andy, because I know that your opponent went from not having DeAndre Swift to having DeAndre Swift, but I, I think Swift is a pretty good play. Last week, Jamal Williams had 19 opportunities, and Craig Reynolds had 15. Yeah. So is that – do you think Swift will have – I th I think so, but – Half he, the work? I think he'll have a little bit more than half, but it comes down to the passing game where – Jared Goff was <laughs> was throwing to Swift at a very high rate. We'll see if Tim Boyle continues that. I I, I think if if you're playing against DeAndre Swift, Craig Reynolds is the wild card and your hope that the team is is so uh, encouraged by his play that they feel like they have to get him touches, and it's not just Swift and Jamal Williams. If you introduce a third option into it, then you have just a you have an opportunity that one that that Williams or Reynolds takes a a carry at the twelve and they score. I mean, just that's that's your saving grace this week. But that's your hope. That's your hope. I don't believe that to be. I true. would be terrified to play against Swift this week. Yeah, I, th I think Craig Reynolds will be an afterthought with both Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift active. Implied point total seventeen and a half for the Lions. Amon Ross St. Brown has been a top seven receiver three out of four weeks, including with Tim Boyle. So are you willing to go back to that well without hesitation just because of how on fire he's been? Um, I'm willing to go back with a, a slight hesitation. I would say that um, he's going to be a fine option. I would play him over the Brandon Iukes, that, that barometer that we set earlier. But what he's done the last four weeks, 12 targets, 12 targets, 11 targets, 11 targets, I don't think he hits double-digit targets with DeAndre Swift back. This stretch has been without DeAndre Swift, without TJ Hawkinson, two of the best the two best pass catchers on the team outside of Amon Ra. All right. Do uh, you like Lockett or Metcalf more in this game? I like Lockett more. You, yeah. And, Lockett. and we should talk about Russell Wilson because I actually think Russell Wilson is not a terrible play. This is the first time I've said that in since week four. Um, the majority of the season, but he, he showed some flashes in the snow Last week, I think the matchup is great. You've got the weapons. You've got him getting healthier. Um, you know, I, I would play him over Tyler Huntley, for for example. Russell Wilson or Tua against Tennessee? Russell. Russ. Russell Wilson or Joe Burrow against Kansas City? Russ. I'm not here. <laughs> yeah, Russell but... Wilson or uh, or Justin Herbert against Denver? Herbert. Herbert. Okay. The Vikings at seven and eight take on the twelve and three Green Bay Packers. Uh, we just got the news. I have an update. 
<laughs> I may not be playing. Yeah, Sean Mannion is expected to come off the COVID-19 reserve list and start the game. But that guy sucks. Uh, but Kellen Mond would be more fun for the show. Yeah, way more fun. Also oh. way more fun for Minnesota. Come on. Sean Mannion, really? <laughs> is he that much better than a rookie who's never Mannion. played football? Probably. Yeah. Sean Mannion. Yeah, he pro- <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have the same doesn't ring have the to same it. ring. Um. Uh, Aaron Rodgers on the other side has a nice ring to it. Yeah. He's going to be what he's been. And he, and he, yes, he, he certainly should be. Uh, but, I mean, you, you have some variables here of like the, the cold. The game script. The game script of that could hold Aaron Rodgers back, but it's also Aaron Rodgers playing like, at this point. I, I've not heard Aaron Rodgers talk about MVP uh, things, and I don't care what he says about it. Trying to analyze the personality of, of Aaron Rodgers, he cares. He, he cares about winning the MVP, and he has the lead with it right now, I would project. So he needs to come out and put up a, a big game and kind of lock it down. And what better way to do it Sunday night in front of everybody against your division rival so I'm st- even with everything we're talking about the concerns Rodgers still locked in as a must play. I would agree I'm not going to bench Rodgers. He's been on too much fire. He's at home. He's played great in the cold before and uh, you know this game is a different level of cold but if there's anyone that can play through it it's going to be a Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame quarterback. I say it that way cuz Brett Favre good too. Uh Alan Lazard you know MVS is back and so Without MVS back, I think Lazard was looking pretty strong. He dropped another touchdown last week. He could add two. But I think it's more muddied now. If you if you mix in the game script and you mix in, you know, MVS was getting targets. Um, Randall Cobb is back at practice. Like, I think I'm probably staying away from Lazard in this game. I I look at them both uh, like a light version of the, uh, the secondary guys for the Rams, where the matchup is sensational. I can't say for sure which one of the guys is, is going to have himself a game, but there's an opportunity for MVS or Lazard to have a big game. So they're worth going into a flex if you really need some upside. I, I wouldn't just because I don't think this game will be competitive with Sean Mannion at quarterback in this weather. I think the Green Bay Packers will get up early and maybe maybe Alan Lazard or MVS gets that first touchdown. But if they don't get that first touchdown, it's probably Devonta Adams. If it's you know passing, it's going to be very difficult. I think the second half of that game to to have fantasy points. Whereas I think Baltimore can keep up a little bit more with uh, the Los Angeles Rams. Justin Jefferson has been nothing short of spectacular this year again, man. And yet you're going to go into your championship week pretty much knowing he's not going to be great. Mm-hmm. I mean, he might be could be he might be good. He's, but he, the odds of great here with Sean Mannion are not high. Right. You have a lower probability, but Justin Jefferson is so good to me that he can overcome the situation and break free, and maybe Mannion can hit him deep. You uh, like A.J. Dillon with the game script, Mike. Yes, I do. Uh, Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, both in your lineups. Yes. Yes. And then uh, is is Tyler Conklin completely out? Yeah, Conklin was a bubble player with Kirk Cousins. He's a, an option. Now he's a double bubble. Yeah, Ooh. now – and double bubble. That's, that's trouble. Yeah, it loses flavor way too quick. Yeah. Uh, Are you, so, K.J. Osborne, who is like – I'd rather he, be dead. He's, I'm saying he's been interesting with Adam Thielen out. So no, I, I said I'd rather be I'd, I'd rather be okay, well then dead. I'm going to go over to Jason, who said he won't play a Packer wide receiver, K.J. Osborne or one of the Packers. Uh, I would play one of the Packers over okay. K.J. Osborne. I'd rather Andy be dead than play K.J. Osborne. Thank you. Oh, Thank man. you, Jason. You're welcome. <laughs> it means a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm here with you, man. Uh, Cleveland, 7-8. <laughs> seven and eight. Pittsburgh, 7-7-1. Seven, seven and one. They're at home. This is the Monday night game. The Browns minus 3.5. That's the DK Sportsbook line. It, it In some ways, it seems mesmerizing to me that the, the Steelers have the better record than the Browns. Um, the over-under is 41. This may be one of the hardest games to watch uh, of your life. The this Browns may be the hardest, one of the hardest things to physically put your eyes upon. Are favored in Pittsburgh. Wow, what does that say about Pittsburgh? Uh, since their their defense has not been strong enough to carry the team. 
Yeah, because their quarterback. Oh, man. This is going to be a gross game. Just disgusting. Yeah, I, it's, I, that's what I just said. This may be like one of the hardest ones to watch. This is going to be a game that has full – this is the last game. Yeah. It will have the full championship decisions. If you've got a Chubb, Nick Chubb, Najee, Deontay, those players are locked into your lineups. Yeah. yeah. And then beyond that, you, you probably aren't playing anybody. Maybe the Muth. Yeah, you're probably not playing. That any, is one area that here. Cleveland is vulnerable to is tight ends. Yeah, and the Muth is coming back um, off of the concussion, so I would I would expect him to go back to where he was. So the, he's a fine kind of low end uh, tight the, end one. Gerald Everett against Detroit or the Muth? I would go with Gerald Everett. I would too. Okay. Um, I don't want to talk about this game anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Nick Chubb should be great. I think the biggest question here uh, is. What do you do if you've got really, really bad options and Kareem Hunt is active? Asking for a friend. I'm not playing him. Yeah, I really bad. Op I'd play Keyshawn Vaughn over him, even if he was active. Okay, well that's the option. So <laughs> thank you. Oh, is it really? Yes. Well, Jarrett Patterson asking now for as a well. friend, right? Yeah. It's you a deep two, dynasty. If I the, the amount that you've tilted on your DraftKings lineup today. I can't even imagine how you're going to tilt on this championship game lineup. Oh, we're destined. It's destiny bound. I'm yeah, not of course it is. I'm not concerned. I'm not in that league. You're going to win for sure. Uh, the rankings and the start sit tool. BeFantasyFootballers.com. Oh. Elijah Moore out. Mike Evans activated from the COVID list, but still dealing with the hamstring. And Mike, you were going to say something. Kareem Hunt is expected to practice today mm. uh, on a oh, limited basis. Such I, a good matchup. Uh, yeah. Good luck, guys, on your decision. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, are you going to go Keyshawn Vaughn or Jarrett Patterson or Kareem Hunt? Because I would go Jarrett Patterson. Um, I'm not sure yet, but whatever it is, it will be the right call. Well, is this the time to just shut the show down? Is that right? Oh, no. Certainly no. not. The segment that everybody's been waiting for. Really? Yep. Yeah. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. So breaking news here, the this is the final fantasy face-off segment of the year, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it has been strikingly competitive. Uh, Mike has secured himself, uh, and we've been keeping track of the mm -hmm. points. You know, you get, what, three for first, two yep. for second, one for third. Mm -hmm. Mike has a two-point lead. So which, he's secured a tie. Which means he is going to finish at least in tie for first. Now, Andy and I are tied, right? Is that how yes. it is? So we, yes. So we can't all finish tied. There's no possibility of that. That correct. is correct. So then it's just me or you this week to see who finishes last and is the biggest loser. That is correct. Yeah, because I, I – uh, And gets their light changed out for like a full yellow light for a week. <laughs> uh, you guys should have had the Joe Burrow T. Higgins stack last week. Yes, we Did should have. Did that work out? It was sweet. Here's how mine went. Wheel of shame. I'm so excited. Who who did this for me? Mike won. Yeah, I won. Wow. Don't worry about it. Just spin the wheel and find out, brother. We got a farmer. Spin it. We got an Oompa Loompa. It says no shame. Biker guy. Oh. Park Ranger. <laughs> oh, oh yes. don't do that. <laughs> Conehead. Do, don't do that. Oh, the Coneheads. That's a throwback. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is going to be a screenshot I'm going to want to undo. <laughs> oh, man. This, this looks... Oh. Uh, Partially like a cone head and partially Get like that thing on there. Uh, the oh, goon, yeah. The Goonies um, sloth. Oh, these are ears that I got to pull down, huh? Oh, yeah, <laughs> but yes. It's 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 his own little dunce cap. The ears make it great. Can You're, you give me the get put the main camera on? Yeah, here. the cone head goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is really good. That's pretty uh, the skin tight. I'll tell you oh. that. I can oh, still hear pretty well. That's good. And you can talk for the first time in a couple weeks on the shame uh, here. You actually have a a face that can see and speak, which is, I can I can speak from experience. I mean, this that's is nice. Blessing. I feel a little, it's warm. Oh, yeah, good. That's you look good. good. I that's mean, good. I got the earbuds in there. Um, thank you, guys. This is quite the treat. So one more, one more wheel of shame to spin next week, though, right? Because we still got to spin the wheel. We'll have to figure that out, yeah. That should just be, ooh. Just to, like, close out. We could put something big on the line. 
Like what? I mean, what? like maybe maybe you got to wear it the whole episode on Friday next week. Mm. Mike Mike's look in his face mm. was like, no. Yeah, no, I'll take my first place. But maybe like the we'll figure it out next okay. week. Okay, all mm. right, we'll think about it. Uh, let's get into the lineups. Uh, I guess I'll kick it off. My quarterback through just uh, just an unconscionable amount of tilting. Russell Wilson. Russell oh. Wilson. Sixty two hundred dollars. Okay. Uh I, I meandered between Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford, and then taking the the cheapy Trey Lance that you both did, probably. I, I assumed this whole week that you would be Matthew Stafford, which is That's who he was before the show began. Yeah, that that oh, is Oh no, you tinkered out of Stafford? I was into Wilson, then I was into Stafford, and then I was okay. into Wilson, and I'm going Wilson. Uh I started the week with looking at Matthew Stafford. I just couldn't do it because, as you said, Trey Lance, he's not like a good price he's 4800 he is below the he's cheaper than sam darnold ian book jacoby Brissett, cooper rush chad henney mitch trubisky I, yeah i mean the, the backups <laughs> cost more i don't know why so trey lance is going to open other things up for us i assume my yes yeah. of course he's in for me yeah i just i just didn't want to do it okay okay Jonathan taylor ronald jones my starting two running backs. jonathan okay. taylor ronald jones my starting running backs Ronald Jones, Daryl Williams. Okay. Daryl Williams coming in at 5,800 against Cincinnati. You get that DraftKings PPR action. Riding dirty, man. Yeah. No GTT. I am. I am. Uh, my wide receivers, Cooper Cup, 9,500. DK Metcalf, 6,500. Braxton Berrios, 3,700. Okay. So you got the DK Metcalf, Russell Wilson stack in. You got Cooper Cup, who I wanted to have. I originally had. Where? You, you guys know no, no Cooper? I do not have Cooper oh, Cup. Oh, you're riding I'm dirty. I'm riding soups dirty. Um, oh, man. It's getting a little tighter. <laughs> I, I have. Feeling a little bit tighter than it felt a minute ago. <laughs> it's vacuuming. Oh, uh, it is. Oh. Um, I have. This does not look good. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Odell Beckham. Oh, uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of mesmerized here. Sorry, go. Who are your three wide receivers? So I have Odell Beckham from the Rams for okay. 5,700. You have budget. Jalen Waddle at 6,700, and this one is where I saved some cash. I have Anton Wesley from the Arizona oh, Cardinals. You're going Wesselton at 3,600. Okay. That's a good. That's a good bargain. Uh, I'm only riding half dirty because I have Cooper Cup at 9,500. I also have Jalen Waddle. And my budget wide receiver of the week, Zay Jones. Oh, at, I had him in earlier. At 3,900. Yeah. He's just – I don't expect her to do a lot, but in the last month, I mean, the guy's getting targets, getting a few catches here and there. Uh, Barrios was 200 cheaper, and it let me do some other awful things with my lineup. Which, speaking of awful things, the bottom three, I mean, like, I'm so top-heavy. I can't like, – so, you've been listing off your cash. <laughs> you have Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup. Right, yeah. like, you're, you're and no And you Cooper. don't have Trey Lance. I could not make it – so I can't wait to hear this. You, you can wait. Um, my tight end is Brevin Jordan. I almost oh, went Brevin Jordan at one point. From the Houston Texans, but by the way. He's only 2,800. He caught another four or five passes last week. Yeah. And I like Davis Mills. My flex position is the is the wide receiver one for the – just amazing New York football giants, which would be tight end Evan Ingram. Oh, so I went okay. Evan Ingram at 3,500. So this is how I afforded the big guys was, okay. gotcha. was Brevin Jordan and Evan Ingram. And who's your defense? The Washington football team against Philadelphia Ooh. at home. Okay. Ooh. Okay. That's, well, that's I feel scary. a little bit better because I was feeling very, very bad. My um, eye, my eyelids are permanently <laughs> pulled upwards Yeah, because it's so oh, tight, great. so tight that it's pulling my eyes up. You kind of because because on the 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 closer up cam you can't really usually see the full cone. I I get like an elf vibe. Um, oh, okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. Um. So my Those tight ears end are real big. My tight end. I went with uh, Mike's start of the week in Foster Moreau. Oh, nice. What was his price? Thirty eight hundred mm. uh, against Indi uh, Indianapolis Colts. He's a good. Uh, yeah. He's a good matchup, and then at flex. I spent up here for a guy coming back off injury. It's risky, but DeAndre Swift is in my lineup wow. at six thousand against Seattle. And then, I don't think that's very risky with the PPR value. Um, and then I did something I have not done once this year. I spent up at defense. I have the Patriots at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Please get a touchdown. Or else I was foolish. That's that's not bad. My tight end is Cole Komet at thirty four hundred. 
Uh, my flex, I've got Rashad Penny in there against Detroit, although that makes me a little bit sad realizing I, I could have put Swift in there, I suppose, but I've got Rashad Penny in, and then I've got the Chicago Bears uh, against Mike Glennon, Jake Fromm, whoever from the New York Giants. Yeah, save this hat for me next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> download the DraftKings app right now. Use the code BALLERS this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes as we come to the end of the year. That's the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Uh, minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Look, I'm going to be – it's Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor for me. Yes, I mean, that's the story. Certainly. And then the, the DK so, stack with Russ. It's all Cooper Cup because I don't have him in U2 do. So if Cooper Cup goes nuclear in the best matchup of all time, which, I mean, I just feel like I already lost. I, I do. I, I can't believe I don't have Cooper Cup in my lineup. My bad. Well, the, the biggest problem is that if you two lose Trey Lance because he doesn't play, is you're going to have to blow up your whole lineup. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's true. So you built in like a little escape hatch yep, to do whatever you, you want to do it, <laughs> later in the week. Which, you know, I wasn't going to take that route. Hmm, that's stupid. Um, that is it for today's show. Mike, you're going to be with people Sunday I, morning. I will be there on Sunday. Good luck, everybody. I got to get this off. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.